And a first carry here for Charles Sims. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. On third down. That's Sims. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got to feel very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He finds Hearns left side. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Dumps it off to Fournette. Space to And finally brought down right at the midfield stripe. That one goes for 24 yards. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got it. carry for Leonard Fournette and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well and they don't permit big plays to happen. Second and five. shotgun he'll look to throw middle of the field it's Robinson a really good pickup of 28 yards that's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage and tell you what a few more plays like that he won't be number two for long well that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field these guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage totals numbers the whole deal and let's face it all of them they all want to be number one he couldn't quite hold it got hit Ball pops out, incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Howard has the first down, and then some. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. O.J. Howard, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jags have taken the early lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. 
And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position, and I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league, but the teams that run the ball. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. To throw on second down. Decker. And this is going to be incomplete. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. From the gun, Decker goes underneath to Martin. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Give him seven on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Fournette, a first down carry. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The rushing numbers for Fournette from last week. 23 carries, 98 yards, too shy of 100. Well, he's the number two runner in the league, and you just know the offensive line wants to get him to number one because most of the good ball carriers, they take care of their linemen. Could be a gold watch in their future if he becomes a leading rusher. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Out to the left there and complete to Howard. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. That one goes for 24 yards. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in hand. They really do, and it, it reminds me of a one great time. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Allen Robinson, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. And it's good to make it 14-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. Let's go! Three, 19. Throwing again on second and ten. Decker. And the hit jarred it loose. 
It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. All right, here we go. Boom, ah! Operating from the gun, Decker. And he's got some space here. And he slides to avoid the hit. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes... And now out come the Jags. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now... Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. And that one results in 35 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had a total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. First down, Jacksonville, the passing game, looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short gain down to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. And he fires one incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. They'll set up to throw. And Robinson with a big catch. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. O.J. Howard with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. With the Bucks offense making their way back out on the field, let's take a look at the playoff picture, Charles, coming into the weekend in the NFC. And with the final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. Hey, yeah, I am impressed. That Thank means you. two weeks, if that, I'm not mistaken, does. correct? That does. But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, maybe that importance gets quadruple. And that's where we are right now to see who can make their last run, their last push to get into the playoffs. Again, they run with Sims. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Green, 39, green. From the gun on third down, Decker, he's got Evans. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. 
Maybe a little sign of life here offensively, Charles. They get their first first down. They didn't have any in quarter number one. And I think what we're seeing is great evidence of good scouting by both teams, right? Understanding what they like to do, their best plays, try and take those away early. So now we're seeing some adjustments, and they end up getting their first first down. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. And that one results in 35 yards. Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? All right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game. And he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. And we have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders. And Deshaun Jackson made that big time return all the way back for a game winner in that one. I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants sideline. Looking to throw on second down. Decker. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Yannick Ngakwe in there to get him for sack number nine now on the year. I don't care if you're taking it in round one, you're undrafted, whatever. As a rookie quarterback in this league, you're going to have games where you face adversity like this. Lessons. All the time you're going to face these lessons. The key for this guy is will he be able to bounce back in the next one? Because right now, this has not been his game. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. He'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. So now it's Andrew Franks on for the field goal. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Frank's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it can be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. to throw now on second and ten over the middle complete that's Robinson and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory 23 yards on the play and with that completion he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively it is and it's got to put a dent in their confidence and you know you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays but with the kind of numbers he's putting up here it's starting to wear on him a little bit I think so they look and oh it'll be intercepted a great read and it's picked off and he will bring it out past the 20 yard line track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. And down he'll go at the 25. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Looking to throw. Decker. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. 
The Bucks on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 17. They give to Martin. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He does have the one interception, Charles, but I think that's been more than offset by the three first-half touchdown passes. I would agree with you. There is a blemish. But when you've thrown three touchdown passes to try and erase it, that's a little bit better than the ratio that all NFL coaches are seeking from their quarterbacks, and he's giving it to them. They'll take the three to one? Every single time. Definitely worth taking in our deep shot here. He's already found the end zone twice here in the first half. Yeah, go back to that same well. They've had trouble containing him, but able to contain him on that play. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Completes it to Hearns. 19 on the last play, 19 more here, and another first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. He'll look to throw here. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Allen Robinson, his second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Very short kick. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys and plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And incomplete here on third down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. Well, pretty woeful there, just 23 yards on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He got 29 yards that time. 
They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. On play action, they'll throw. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast to back. He's skipping away there. Right side, it turns. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. throw and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack and with just four seconds left in this first half a timeout call four seconds to go in field goal unit from the right hash it's a 35 yard attempt and his kick is good and their lead will swell up to 28 so they get the three, increase their lead to close out the half. Excellent way to end a drive. Go into the locker room with a little bit of extra momentum after adding three to their total. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. And he is knocked down from the side right at the 45. Happy holidays, Larry. Your gift. Take that. We've got some football to get to. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the See how they handle it. It might be made defensively. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here we go. What? 90. On second down, here's Fournette. And some room to run now. And they're able to get this one across the 35. with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop him. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. He lost two there, and it's third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him. Ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half. 
just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. First carry for the former Tar Heel, Elijah Hood. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And this seemingly endless drive continues. He'll drop to throw. That's Hearns. He's got it. Touchdown, Jaguars. Alan Hearns, his touchdown of the season. And the Jaguars continue to roll. Brandon, is there any way you and I can join this quarterback in the zone he's in? He's absolutely feeling it. Touchdown after touchdown, throwing the ball. Well, now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. Sideways. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. To throw on second down. 45 at the 44. It's a 10 yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Dead well. Now, Tags with this when the defense for a little too early. Did wanting that quick a snap, but I think sometimes those big offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Back to throw. Decker. Oh, he's got a little daylight. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So the offense has it first and 10. From the gun, Decker. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Give him nine on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Looking to throw on second down. Decker. And Brady, the tight end's got him. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. And that'll set him back five. where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. 
because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. The Bucks on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and 16. Off the play fake. Decker. Quick hitter here. It's complete. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Kick is good. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But, hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. And the Jaguars are going to cover this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes last week. He ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, Hard to get him started again occasionally. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. They'll look to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Now a desperation throw, deep down, thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey, and the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. Well, when you start thinking of guys that are in the mix for Defensive Player of the Year, I think you use him as Exhibit A. Maybe he's not the leading guy right now, but he's at least on the periphery and deserves to be in the discussion. And because of that, he's looking at a game today where in order to make that big move and maybe become the guy, he needs multiple takeaways, multiple big plays, things that get our attention and reverberate for weeks to come. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. Again, it's Fournette. And he'll take this one across the 45, up to about the 46-yard line. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and 10. 
That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one. Maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. They'll run it here with Logan. And he's not even going to come close to picking up the first. They stop him right at the line of scrimmage. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say, why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Not sure what you're thinking here, partner, but I believe the officials have done a nice job here getting together and then coming out and indicating that there was a receiver in the area. Absolutely, and he was in the area. Correct call made, no grounding. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Let's go, watch now, Barney, Barney. From the gun on third down, Decker. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They'll run it with Sims. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here, as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. from the gun. Decker. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. To throw on second down. Decker. Incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was Let's all the go. difference. That's what forced the incompletion. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Room here to run. And that finish to this ball game. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Jaguars, they continue to rack up the victories as this one moves them to 13-2 and two on the year. And they will head home next week to take on the Tennessee Titans. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, well, this... Legging with Nick, we dump it off like V. Ramonovic. Sorry, homie, you know we not friends, it's all for politics. Politics, never get to see who really running. Now you know who running. You rap.